Today, what we're doing is we are watching Breath of the Wild's best theoretical time. This was a compilation of all of the best segments from the top speedrunners of Breath of the Wild. And apparently, if you take all of those, you can theoretically beat Breath of the Wild in 22 minutes and 44 seconds. Well, why why are we watching this? What like what what are my qualifications? Well, I also speedrun Breath of the Wild uh, as <laughs> probably seen from the uh, YouTube channel. I subscribe to the YouTube channel by the way if you haven't already. But my current personal best is 34 minutes and 27 seconds, which is a top 100 time. And it's pretty reputable. So we're going to take a look at this. I'm going to explain all of the tricks that they do here because some of them are insane. The fact that you can beat it in 22 minutes is crazy. So I feel like I am one of the qualified people to explain how insane this is. That's, oh, that's so cool. It's showing the routes in just like really fast time. Any percent best theoretical time, are you ready? Don't get confused by the change in camera angles, heart counts, or inventories. These are taken segments from each of the top speedrunners, Breath, uh, Breath of the Wild, any percent times, and then compilated together to create one overarching speed run. Uh, the first thing in there is obviously is that it's going to be in French. And the reason why it's in French is because French dialogue and text is faster. That's the, the very, very first thing. All right, so obviously the first thing you need to do is you need to get the Shiga Slate. What you're going to see in a second, though, is we're going to clip out of the Shrine of Resurrection. But the way it works is you have uh, Link's camera and Link's position, and the game doesn't exactly know what to do with Link's camera. So then it actually swaps around the camera and uh, bumps Link through. Uh, or just like makes Link appear in that location. And that's what they just did uh, with the scope clip. Super fast, incredible. Now you walk up this uh, this slope so you can clip back into uh, the overworld because currently we're out of bounds. You'll see right here, he uncrouches at a certain angle to get right back in to bounds. Uh, I haven't, no, oh, whoa, that's new. I actually haven't seen that before. You use, that right there is a bullet time bounce. I'll explain that in a second, but I have not seen that before in a speed. That's crazy. That's crazy. He gets skew right here and does ESC, which is an extended skew clip, uh, right into uh, the stasis shrine. So you'll see that it's just pretty easy here. All you do is just play uh, essentially normally. You just stasis the uh, boulder at the top. You run whistle sprinting to go faster, regular sprinting when you uh, run out of when you have full stamina. And then you'll see this, which I like to call swag jump. And you just go across by jumping and then you do a shield jump right afterwards to get an inherent double jump midair. You can use that in multiple locations. You'll also see it happening in Magnesis as well. Um, but that's stasis shrine. Pretty awesome and pretty simple. What's gonna happen next is Link is going to head over to uh, the boulder here and do a, not exactly stasis jump, but it's more like stasis boulder hop, I guess. <laughs> um, it's actually really cool because right now uh, we are at stasis and the next area is to go to Cryonis. So you want to uh, stasis and then you want to use the, <laughs> that's such a flex right there. You want to use the uh, stasis to jump up the boulder uh, and get there. This is called a uh, bolt time bounce, which by the way, in this theoretical time, stupid RNG right there. The way it works is that if you bolt time and ha dude, 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 how do I explain that? How do I explain that? That's f nuts. That is the most RNG random setup that I've seen. You do not do that in the any percent run. You don't. There's a specific setup where you line up your arrow at a certain dot and then you uh, scoot link to the side and then you wait for the bokoblin to make a no. He just blindly went for it. That's crazy. So they're going to do another skew right there and then extended skew clip by unequipping, equipping the shield. It's nuts. You can just clip through any wall of breath. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's actually crazy. Dude, this is nuts. Because normally what you do in the speed run for a lot of this stuff is you would get skew on the side of the shrine and then you would shield clip by uh, shield jumping and then unequip your shield and uh, re-equip it afterwards right there to clip into the wall. But you they're just doing extended skew clips for all of this. Uh, let's see what they do with, uh, with Cryonis here. Because I go off to the right 
and, and, and just do it basically normally. They go off to the left, and then they do a wall jump. <laughs> with, with a cryonis bounce. What? Okay, I do the cryo bounce, right? I know how to do the cryo bounce. Basically, you want to shield jump onto the cryonis block and then jump with your shield and then unequip it at the, uh, at the end. But the wall jump is insane right there. So here they're going to do a bull time bounce um, where, yes. Okay, so this is the normal setup. This is the normal set. N no crazy, uh, just blind, uh, blind, uh, rolls there. But that is the normal setup for a BTB where you aim at a certain spot, you shoot an arrow, you get the Bokoblins to look towards you, and then you shield jump onto the Bokoblin. You'll see something right here. What they get is called Unloaded Magnesis. You can see Magnesis is currently in a lower poly version than it actually is supposed to be at the time. Uh, and the lower poly version is uh, basically what Breath of the Wild does to save space. Uh, the stuff that you see in the far distance doesn't have a lot of detail. So when you actually go so fast that the game can't load in properly, you have that unloaded low poly version of Magnesis. So you can just walk through the door because the door is not loaded in there. And it saves a ton of time. Okay, so this is classic standard uh, Magnesis here. I wonder if they're going to do... Ah, they are going to do it. Yes. So this is called uh, Box Walk. <laughs> um, or at least Magnesis Box Walk. Uh, where you just walk on the box while it's going over and you skip through the entire shrine. You just skip through the entire shrine. Oh, it's so sick. It's such a hard trick to get. I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it, dude. I'm assuming. Yes. Okay. They do a second box walk here. No, wait, they're actually. Okay. They get one fish. Okay. That that's a new trick that they've uh, that they've recently discovered. So first off, they get the the, the fish. I'm assuming uh, for later for the Ganon fight. That stasis bounce is a new sort of trick that gives you the same speed as a bullet time bounce. The way it works is basically you want a neutral shield jump bounce off of your shield while the box hits you at a certain time. That's frame perfect that he got it right there at this certain angle. It's so cool. And you go immediately uh, to the uh, uh, the bomb shrine right here. And they're going to get skew right here so they can get to ESC. They're going to jump and then get into the shrine. That's crazy. That's so nuts. Like, ESC is frame perfect. That was frame perfect. Most of the stuff is completely RNG, random, that you just get it. And so all of this splice is just disgusting. Like, this is the most disgusting run of Breath of the Wild. The fact that you can get into the last shrine of Breath of the Wild in 10 minutes, crazy. Actually crazy. You'll see something called a wind bomb next. This is what got me into Breath of the Wild speedrunning. Basically, you... Yes, okay, so you jump... Oh my god! Dude, okay, we gotta rewind that just a little bit here. They jump onto this little pedestal at the very beginning of the bomb shrine, and then they use one bomb. So they jump off, place the bomb, bullet town bounce, place the other bomb, and then the detonate the first bomb. So the first bomb detonates the second bomb into Link and shoots Link across the shrine at an optimal angle. So you see that? Blow up the first bomb, and then right into the pedestal. Yes, okay, so they're gonna do another bullet time bounce, oh sorry, a wind bomb right there, and then not take damage because the game can't load. <laughs> and then they do one, wait, wait, no way. They do another one? That's, that's crazy. That's actually insane. Because what I have to do is I have to go over to a tree and then stasis uh, the tree and then do a stasis jump with the tree. Like basically the same thing that they did with the boulder at the very, very beginning. That's nuts. They get the paraglider in 12 minutes, and... ...21 seconds, which is, yeah, over a minute faster than world record. <laughs> which is so nuts. <laughs> All right, this is the uh, Temple of Time BTB. Uh, this is the, in my opinion, hardest trick of the run that at least I, I can't do, uh, or that I can do. Um, basically, it's two frame window that you have to get right there. Uh, it's a one fifteenth of a second that you have to hit to actually bounce off that Bokoblin at a uh, 
good angle enough to get to uh, the Hyrule Castle and skip the rest of the game. That's it. You do Great Plateau and then skip the rest of the game. <laughs> Which is just nuts. This is also the new castle route. So this is different from uh, what I do in any percent. So you actually get most of the same weapons on this, but in a s different location and in a different um, spot. So this is me basically blind reacting to a lot of this. So we're going to get like all of these weapons and just get them so uh, you can beat Ganon as fast as possible. That's all we're getting the weapons for. The reason why we had fish earlier too was to eat that and get tier three attack up for the Ganon fight. All of this is now prep for Ganon. Theoretically, you can just go to Ganon, but this is all prep here. So that's crazy. Get the Ancient Arrow as well, which uh, eliminates the arrow RNG. Normally what you have to do in the any percent run is uh, hope you get good arrows because you break a bunch of boxes. Hope you get good arrows from them. And if you get a lot of arrows and a lot of bomb arrows, then then you can beat Ganon as fa like really, really, really fast. However, if you don't get a lot of them, you're going to be wasting a lot of time in the end fight because you have to use normal strategies. Uh, so getting that Ancient Arrow saves time. Uh, you can see right here, they're actually making the food. Wait. Yeah, they're making the food. What the hell? Wait, what? That was such a fast clip, right? I know they do this in the, the, the new route. I know that I know this exists, but the scope clip was so fast. <laughs> watch this, watch this, right? So they cook the attack three, uh, times three up food, right? And then they go here, scope clip right there and go out of bounds. It's the same exact thing that they did at the beginning in the Shrine of Resurrection. But it was just so fast, it caught me off guard. Uh, you scope clip and then you uh, wind bomb here to a certain location in the castle. And then just, uh, you're still out of bounds. So you go back and then I believe you go back to here, which is normal routing from here on. Yes, because this is the, oh, it's actually different. Because like who needs to travel outside of the, the castle when you can just travel inside of it? Oh my God. Eat that, uh, eat the food there because it's the best time. And I believe you're just head to Ganon right here. You'll see something called a uh, wind blight skip. That is nuts. I I'll let it play and I'll explain why that's crazy what he just did right there, right? So you can see this wind blight is actually getting hit by the arrow in the cutscene. So you'll see him start uh, glitching out a little bit right there. Yeah, he's, he's kind of like nudging. So he's getting hit by the arrow in the cutscene, which allows you to beat Wind Blight with one arrow. And you know what? That's, that happens, okay? That, that is not the shocking factor of this. I do that in my speed runs. Most people do that in their speed runs. It's just the way to do it now, right? That's, that's been known for a while. You can do that. But the crazy thing about it, if we rewind, is that I have to do a setup, right? Most people do. Actually, everybody does. You go off to the, the right side wall, you climb it, you go to the, the left, you go to the right, you backflip, and then you go to the left, and then you line up your arrow at a certain marker uh, in the sanctum. And then you shoot it and walk forward. Look at this. Walks in, blindly shoots, activates cutscene. That is the craziest thing I've seen in this run. That's the craziest thing. That's nuts. So now we're on the water blade. Let's see what these strats are. I, I'm pretty sure that this, the exact same that I do, which you head off to the side and you want to get uh, double hits, right? So you spin the wind and then you hit the arm and uh, the torso uh, of wind blight, uh, of water blight. Uh, so you can just beat water blight right there. Really fast. Right here, you'll see that they're actually uh, going to hit the... Am I right about this? Yes. Okay. They're going to hit water blight twice in the critical spot and then spin the wind uh the rest of water blight right there or not oh wow or not i thought they would that was actually really okay fire blight what you want to do is you want to hit him three times with a spin the wind uh and then you hit him three times again with the spin the wind and then he knocks over which is that's crazy too because they hit the arm <laughs> and they did it <laughs> And that's half a fire blight already. That's 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 two and a half Ganons down. <laughs> uh, then uh, you wait for uh, to again to, to do the thing. Poop out a bomb right there. Let's see what they do for for the rest of this because I always do it a little bit differently. Yeah, hit with the uh, hit with the boomerang, and then spin the wind. The rest of it. Yeah, there it is. There it is. <laughs> and then on to thunder blight. You sprint forward, and then uh, make sure that you 
get the shield. Pound. So that you can knock him off and then get the rest right here, I believe. One arrow for... Oh. All right, that works too. And then they're going to pick up the boomerang that they left on the ground. Throws the boomerang. Right here, you have to wait for the animation to go. And then you knock him down. The, the strats that go through this is just nuts. Actually just nuts. Let's see what this Ganon fight looks like. Because I actually haven't seen this with the new route. You don't want to normally like do too much here. Because you want to get to the end. And you want to get the uh, arrows. And then afterwards you want to shoot all of the arrows. And get crits here. <laughs> this is crazy. This is crazy. <laughs> this is so nuts. Oh my god, that, that's that's half of uh, that's half of this. And then my favorite part of the run, personally, because uh, it's just so satisfying. You'll see it in a second, but this is Calamity Stunlock. So you can actually keep Calamity here and stunlock him uh, for the rest of the run. You can just spin the win. You have to uh, pound your double-handed weapon right as the spear hits the ground right there. It's all timing right there. It's not a huge window, but all, that's all you do. And it's so fast, too. A uh, hit, and there's Ganon. 20 minutes, 11 seconds of a Calamity Ganon. And then Dark Beast. I doubt there's anything new with Dark Beast. Because uh, Dark Beast is a walking simulator, or it's a horse simulator. But let me see what happens. I'm, I'm actually really curious. Like, we've seen everything so far. It has to be broken some way. Because it only took them, like, a minute and a half to do the rest of this. I, I love how the Dark Beast, by the way, just misses. I think that's the funniest thing. <laughs> that's so fast. That's so that's so quick. You just immediately <laughs> Dude, I just love invest theoretical time, right? You just get the uh perfect draws. Uh you get every time you just always get um the fastest hits there. And you can just bonk like that. And it doesn't matter cuz cuz Dark Beast doesn't lose much time at all because look, look at dude look at this precise gameplay what's going on what's gonna happen next <laughs> oh my god and with the timed belly as well on the frame there it is and that's time 2244 Point one six seven. That is nuts. Through the random bullet time bounces, the absolute insane blind wind blight, and the new route of the the castle. This is the most. In, this is an insane speed run. This is obviously probably <laughs> not possible by the average human to do this. I wouldn't even say it. It's probably just not possible to do this by anybody in one run. Unless you grind it out for the next 10 years. That's that's my prediction here. I don't think people could do this. Unless there's some new skip, I don't see us getting down to 22 anytime. But this is just... It's possible. This proves that it is possible to get uh, a 2244 in Breath of the Wild. It is the best theoretical time. All you need to do, it's pretty simple. If you want to get this time, really, really simple. Just get frame perfect tricks and perfect RNG. What could go wrong?